Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar hosted by CF Wholesale, um, featuring Sean Thompson, our VP of Renovation Lending. I'm here to talk even more about renovation lending here at Cardinal Financial Wholesale. Um, today, he will be covering just kind of the process of those loans, the processes, how they're um, made special at Cardinal Financial Wholesale, and just the process in general for those types of loans. So as always, if you are not already an approved broker, please visit cfwholesale.com and hit become a broker. It's a really, really easy process. It's a very short form that'll be sent to our team and that somebody will reach out to you to get that process started for you so that you can start lending with us. Um, so without much further ado, um, here is Sean Thompson to take you through the great info he has for you today. Thank you, Victoria. Thank you. Well, good to be with all of you uh, once again on this one. Uh, we're going to get uh, a little bit in the weeds in this one. The way I the way I'll, I'll sort of preface this is there are some originators who are more of the push push the button and wait for the outcome kind of. And, 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 and how they get to the end result is really no interest so long as they do get there. Um, then there are others of you out there who kind of like to see what's under the hood, you know, or what it's like before you turn the engine on. I'm, I'm like throwing like a bunch of analogies at you at the same time. But what I want you to take away from today's session is no matter which one of those types of, of, of originators you are, this system is designed to help you safely navigate you and your borrower through renovation financing here with us at Cardinal Financial Wholesale with little or no additional rental related effort from you, right? So I'll continue to reiterate that today, you know, but we're going to get a look under the hood, talk a little bit about our process as we get through this and um, kind of how it works. What I find interesting is every lender out there who does renovation will somewhat publish a high level, here's our process. And it's kind of like a six steps or nine steps or seven steps. You know, at the end of the day, I mean, here's ours, but it ends up being a little laughable because the devil's in the details. The key questions end up being, okay, well, these are your six steps, these are your nine steps, but who's doing it, right? Who's doing those steps and um, who's responsible for those jobs to be done? Because we all know it's a 20,000 foot view. So today I'm going to give you some insight as to how our sausage is made. And I keep toggling between the, the steps. We got nine steps if you go to ours, right? So I'm going to talk to you about some of the key players involved. Um, generally speaking, your, your, your uh, account executive, of course, um, is there for for you in, in a bunch of different ways, not limited to, you know, pricing, renovation, you know, octane staging if needed, you know, credit related inquiries, you know, the renovation transaction coordinator, if you're not familiar with that term, you know, is a production facing renovation advisor, right? That is walking you through the, the scenarios, setups and tasks, and really are kind of the, the front facing um, folks on our team the project coordinator, renovation project coordinator, this is a pretty unique position is an uninterrupted project supervisor. So they're interacting primarily with contractors, customers, municipalities, you know, and inspectors, right? Although you see them rooting around in your transaction, you generally don't talk to them that much, right? So I'm going to try and be chronological or stay chronological, meaning walk you through start to finish you know, in the order of an actual loan, you know, starting with the pre-flight or the scenarios, you may not have your deal completely teed up yet and you want to understand what you can and can't do, right? So I would, I would urge you to reach out to your account executives to use some of our measuring tools, you know, for this that we have online for you, the 30-day closing calculator, for example, you know, the max mortgage worksheet, which is not required for our loans, you know, but sometimes they give you some good, some good ability to see what's possible with the loans ahead of time and the minimum property standards uh, document. That's a great one so that you can sort of see what ought to be done in order for a property to pass inspection either now or post-closing, right? Or what should be in my scope of work, if you will. 
I'm also going to introduce to you guys the renovation scenario desk, right? Which means you can reach out directly to the renovation team along with your AE. All right. And one easy, simple, you know, request for them to find out what can and can't be done and ask us direct detailed questions around the renovation or construction portion of the loan. All right. So that's huge. And I want to be able to offer that to you guys. And that will be offered to you as a link directly from your, your AE, your account executive here at Cardinal Financial Wholesale. When we get to onboarding, you know, any additional standard info, you know, you only really need the renovation amount apart from any additional standard info, right? Meaning your credit stuff is your credit stuff. You do that on your non-rental loans. But when it comes to renovation loans, we're not asking you to do much, if at any at all, but certainly let us know what your intended renovation amount is going to be. That's pretty much it, right? So I'm going to show you kind of what happens behind the scenes. A couple of key renovation pages in Octane you should know about um, for the input, um, the property turn screen, the construction screen, and the terms. Um, I don't have examples, but I'll make sure I include them, you know, on this particular presentation when we do send it out. Um, and the notes section. The notes section become really important. I'm going to tell you why in just a minute. So the first time you get introduced to the transaction coordinator in your in your in your in your files that you give to us, you know, you're gonna you're gonna have an LO consultation, right? So the LO consultation, that's what we cover. It's a really important step. We cover sort of what what are you guys doing with renovation? What are you aiming for? You know, your closing dates, things like that. Uh, what are the program guidelines? And we, we just kind of do a quick check to make sure you're still within them, right? Um, what's the current property status? Is utilities on or off? Or has this house been vacant for a very long time? You know, is there contractor info? There's not. Remember, 30% of our deals come in the door where the customer hasn't chosen a contractor yet. And any third party needs, if applicable, meaning do you have a HUD consultant already? And if you don't have a HUD consultant, do you need us to help you uh, 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 find one or refer one? Um, and that kicks off the next piece here is our project coordinator workflow. All right. So from there, you, the project coordinator, remember I told you, these are sort of, when I say uninterrupted, what I'm really referring to is that there's no other people that contractor and customer work with all the way until the project is completed. All right, so they review the scope of work, meaning the contractor bid, creating clarity around that. Um, I'm going to show you a little bit more information on that in just a minute. We're setting the project uh, projected project related boundaries. Yeah, I can talk today. Uh, project related boundaries, meaning what are you trying to do in the scope of work? Is it possible? Oh, this is what you're doing. Then you want to make sure that this and this and this happens. Those kind of conversations, right? We're ordering the cost analysis reports, which are needed on conventional renovation loans over $35,000 in repairs. Unlike the 203K, where it's a HUD consultant, that dynamic is happening with the transaction coordinator and the LO consultation. The cost analysis on conventional loans, the ordering of that report, should you need one, happens at the renovation project coordinator position. And then sort of explaining and facilitating validation. Right. And I'm going to show you in the next slide, you know, that that is, in fact, a separate sort of workflow, if you will, you know, than the process of the scope of work. They often get conflated. Right. The scope of work and the validation. Here's what I mean. The scope of work. Workflow may look and feel kind of like this. You have an initial submission. Contractor gives us an initial bid. And then we go back and go, uh. Can you break it out into labor and material, please? Because we have to have it broken out that way in most cases, right? And then we'll give it to an appraiser once we get it back from the contractor. And the appraiser could say to us, hey, this is great and all what you guys are doing. I gave you an after improved value, but don't forget this health and safety item that needs to be added to the bid, right? And then we give that back to the contractor to get final soft sign off on what the, the, the complete and final version of the what the customer is going to do post-closing. But that's a track. And I wanted to point that out to you. So that's just the scope of work clarity part of it, right? When you look at validation, that's a separate track altogether, right? So we might get, and in our introduction to the contractor, we might request validation documentation. We get that back from the contractor, you know, and we review it. Uh, you didn't sign this page and you forgot a copy of your driver's license. Can you please give us that, right? 
And, and then we submit to our counterparty risk team to complete the validation step. And then there's a final decision. Those are two, those are two mutually exclusive tracks, right? So I really wanted to point that out. A lot of times they get conflated. Do you have everything you need from the contractor? Well, which one are you talking about? For validation or for the bid, right? The appraisal. I'm going to walk you through a track for the appraisal too. This is really important, you know, because I've walked you through the scope of work clarity on this page, right? And this needs to have been completed before we start at step one on the appraisal. You know, so when you think about that, not having a clear scope of work, meaning a real good understanding of the what you're going to do post-closing before the appraisal is ordered is one of the biggest mistakes I see originators make, right? So my old adage is you sacrifice a day or two up front to get this solidified will save you weeks on the tail end of back and forth, which bid worked. The appraisal gave me this. You need to add these more things. You should have gotten that. You know, this bid is not really final yet. Oh, we're waiting for the final one. Well, the value is wrong because we didn't have a fun. You see where I'm going with that, right? The sooner we would have gotten a clear scope of work before we ordered the appraisal, the better off your transaction is. I'm going to walk you through a step where we sort of help you understand where you are in that dynamic. Once we have the appraisal back, and it's in final review, what we call final project review, we're kind of hoping we have a combination of a couple of things in order to pass that final project review. A, is my bid final, which I just talked to you about, right? Is my contractor in fact validated, which can happen at any moment in the transaction. It can happen up front, it can happen, you know, close to the appraisal coming back, you know, but is it in fact done, right? And then is the appraisal referencing the right document? Right? Is the appraiser referencing the bid, the most, the latest version of that bid by date? You know, do they have an older version? Sometimes on two or three Ks, they have the contractor bid and not the work write up. Sometimes on conventional loans, they have the work write up and not the contractor bid. You know, it's inverted, right? And then is our work write up and feasibility complete, right? Does it line up? So you think about that. You want it to line that keyhole to line up properly. My third party bid my actual contractor bid, and my appraisal should all be referencing the same scope of work and the same price, right? So, and then we sort of look at the last piece, what do we need to start this project? Is upfront money needed to my contractor? And that discussion goes through the customer, right? So Mr. or Mrs. Borrower, you're about to close, your contractor is asking for $35,000 upfront. Um, he's allowed to get that. Are you okay with us giving it to him? right? So that the customer's involved in that discussion. And then you make it through your final project review. Now, I kind of walked you through, once you're at final project review, chances are your stones throw, stones throw away from closing, you know, but the key notifications in Octane are really, really important, right? This helps you understand status-wise where your loan is. These were designed kind of like Amazon, you know, notifications, right? So when you look at them, it's kind of a, a recap of what's been done so that you always know what the status of your loan is relative to the renovation portion of it, right? You know, we initial reviews done, bought consultations are done, validation is done. Now remember, validation can be done at any point in here. The bids we got, we didn't look at them yet or we didn't approve them yet, but we got them. We want to let you know we got them, right? Um, and then we'll send you out when they're actually looked at and secured that's when we confirm the appraisal can be ordered. Once we have bids received and they're done, the appraisal can be ordered, of course, right? Once the appraisal is reviewed. So this kind of plays like an Amazon tracking system, right? If you keep an eye on these in the notes section, all right, they come to you once those tasks have been completed. It's the quickest way to understand where your loan is relative to your closing. Now, I did point out that what makes this all really good and work really swiftly is the fact that you guys are communicating with transaction coordinators to find out what's going on, but our project coordinators are the ones who are really driving the dialogue between customers, contractors, municipalities, inspectors, all the way through the project. Meaning we don't hand that off to another draw person or another two draw people, you know, happening in post-closing, you know, to kind of mix up what's going on. This is one relationship and that works out super well when it comes to familiarity, holding our customers and contractors, you know, to the promises that they made prior to closing, of course, right? And then driving that project to completion. If we don't get a completed project, then this is all done for naught, right? 
So we want to make sure our project completes and completes safely on time with happy customers in the end that you can get more loans from, right? You know, so listen, as I round it off, here's my thoughts on this, you know, and I really want you guys to, you know, take the swing, you know, with the way that this works. You don't really need to understand all what's under the hood here. You know, I'm showing it to you so you get a feel for how easy this works and what you can look out for to keep the loan moving on your end. But if you're that light switch loan officer, you just found out how this works, right? You know, why this is made so easy for you. We don't require max mortgage worksheets. We don't require crazy forms that you need to learn how to use in order to fill out. We don't require that, you know, you keep an eye on where you are in Octane all the time. Remember, all you need to do is give us the amount that your customer projects they're going to spend in renovation in the beginning and all this magic happens downstream. So take the swing, trust the support we built for you, lean into the notifications. You know, you might find yourself, you know, with no need to call for status nearly as much if you go into the notes section and you know what those notifications mean and you leverage them, right? That's what I mean by leveraging our amazing technology, right? So I'm going to round it out there. I'll turn it back over to you, Victoria. We can take some questions now. Awesome. Great info, Sean. So yeah, there are a couple questions coming on through. Um, so first one is, what is the process to validate the contractor? And does it have to be a third party? What if the owner is a licensed or experienced contractor? So uh, validating the contractor is really the way I put it. Um, it's the reason why we don't call it an approval, right? We're checking to see that you are legally capable of doing the business, rendering services for exchange for money in the state that our subject property is in. What that means is, does that state require that you have credentials, licensing? In New Jersey, we call it registration, right? Um, do you have the proper insurance? Do you have a minimum amount of required insurance for that job? We get a questionnaire filled out so we know who your company is, a W-9 so we know who to pay, a copy of your driver's license, all right, and we do not a credit report, but a business background check, right, to ensure that your company wasn't bankrupt yesterday, you know. And the last is we run that owner against a sex offenders list for obvious reasons. That's contractor validation, right? So that's one part of your question. The second part of your question is 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 referencing what we call self help, right? And that is when the borrower and the contractor are the same person, right? And we don't entertain self-help transactions uh, at Cardinal Financial. Most lenders don't, although you'll read them the guidelines that they do. The challenge I see with that, not to get too long-winded with it, is I have to establish time, talent, and assets, right? You have the time to do the job, the project, while you do the job that we pre-qualified you for the mortgage for, should they be two different things. Um, you have the talent, meaning I can't buy you any tools. Do you already own a skill saw that you need to build this addition, right? And, and assets. I can't pay you labor, you know, as the, as the owner, I can only pay you for materials. Once they find that out, they go hire a contractor. Great. All right. So next question, um, this one's, it's kind of similar, but it's not about the contractor itself is this is a specific situation, but I feel like you can speak to it more generally. Um, mm -hmm. Someone says they had a client that wants to purchase a property that is zone commercial, but it is, it seems like it used to be a dwelling. So it's a three bedroom, two bath commercial property. Um, so it's a home slash business kind of. Will Cardinal lend on this type of property? In this particular situation, this person's talking about, they said that the person will live in the property and use a section for business. Um, so maybe just speak to commercial versus residential and all the components of that question. Sure, sure. What you're, what you're identifying is a mixed use property, right? Um, and the 203K is quite amenable to mixed use properties, right? Generally, we look at them as rectangle buildings, you know, and in high density areas, you know, where there's might be a storefront downstairs and then a couple of apartments upstairs, you know, and if you looked at the building from the side, it'd be rectangular, right? That's generally what they look like, right? But I understand the one that you're, you're, you're describing. It could be a single family residence where the garage was converted into a dentist office allowed in some portions of, of, of single family zoned areas. 
the main streets. We see them all the time. A main street before you get into the neighborhood might have a, a dentist office on it, right? You know, so I get that type of mixed use as well. Same rules apply. If it's single family, I mean, uh, if it's one story, no more than 25% can go towards this commercial square footage, right? And the rest has to be residential. And you can do that under the 203K, provided that you're going to live there, of course. Be careful with that. We're not going to believe that you're going to move from a giant house in the suburbs, you know, to an apartment above the pizzeria in order to get your mixed use building. Sorry. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, next question is, what is the maximum first draw at closing? Um, if by first draw, you mean upfront material money, I know I'm talking semantics, but that's what we call it, right? Um, it's 50% of the material costs shown on the bid, not to exceed 25% of the overall project. Thinking of moving that down to 15 for obvious reasons. Um, but, you know, on a $400,000 loan and the contractor says 250 of it is materials and he wants half of that, 70, uh, 250 or 125, you're capped at 100 because that's more, that's, the max amount because it's 25% of the overall project. So I don't want to get deep in the weeds with the numbers, but it's a pretty generous amount, right? But the customer's got to be cool with that, right? And a lot of customers, particularly on purchases, who've known contractors for a very short amount of time, might not want to give that much money. They may want to cede the contractor some money, you know, but certainly not as much as the contractor wants. And that's that dance up front, you know? So a little dangerous when we give contractors money up front, for materials, we hope that they get to that first draw okay, you know, but we try to mitigate that with the customer being involved, you know, and um, from the contractors in, it's pretty good. We seed the money to start the project. A lot of lenders don't do that. Awesome. Next question is, is this program only for primary homes or investment properties allowed? And if so, for both situations, what are the max LTVs? Uh, no, it's not only for primary. We can do investment properties on our choice rental offering. Um, it's up to 85% of the cost to buy plus the cost to renovate. You know, so if you're buying for 200 and you've got $100,000 in repairs, we'll lend you 85% of the $300,000 as an investor. No investment multifamily though. So it's single family only, 85 LTV for investment. Second home, I believe it's 90 LTV. And goes high as 90 LTV on second homes. I think second homes was part of the question there, right? Uh, yeah, well, I, I think that was kind of just, I think it was good to speak to it anyway. So yes, I'm sure someone has that question. Um, yep. So next one is, how long do they have to be on the title? I, I, this feels like it's insinuated towards like a flip property, um, but if you could speak to that kind of in general. Um, let me go back to the FICO score two piece. I didn't answer that. So how long do they borrow need to be on title? I'll get to that in a second. I believe our, and, and, you know, Vince, Chris, if you want to shoot me this really quick, I believe our FICO score is the same as the owner-occupant FICO score, 580 for investments, but you're not going to pull a, 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 a an approved um, LP response with, with, a, with a 580 credit score on investment property, right? You know, so I think the number ends up being somewhere around 660, 680, you know, where you start to see favorable responses on investment properties, right? It's not so FICO score driven. I wish I had a better answer for you on that. Um, the other question was, how long does the borrower need to be on title? That's a good question. It depends on what, it, well, it doesn't depend on what you're doing. We have customers who close today and need to do a renovation loan tomorrow, right? Uh, because they got the wrong style of financing. You can do that. Um, to the lender who wrote that loan, it would be considered an early payoff, you know, in their world, right? You know, but the customer can pay off early and they can do a renovation loan immediately. There's no seasoning required, you know, from the moment you purchased it to now. You can't recoup back the money you paid in cash if you did a cash deal and you want that money back. You can only do a rate in term of the payoff of the loan that you acquired, including a second if you acquired it when, acquired it when you purchased the house, um, and the renovation and the contingency and the closing costs. That's all. I can't include any cash out you know, or delayed financing, meaning giving you back the cash that you use to purchase the house, you know, within a degree of time. 
Awesome. And then you kind of already talked about uh, FICO score, but this question is more specific. Um, someone asked, what is the minimum FICO score needed on an 85% one unit investment purchase? Freddie Choice Reno, Freddie Choice Reno Express. Well, I think it's I think it's the same answer, you know, uh, that you're going to see that get approved somewhere around 660, 680. You know, although our published FICO is 580 across the board on conventional renovation, um, you're going to see that get approved somewhere around 660, 680. I've never seen anything below that, you know, get a favorable favorable response from the decision engine. Awesome. Well, that was all the questions for this round. If anybody has any, please go ahead and drop them, you know, drop them in. We're happy to still answer them. Um, but hopefully that just means that Sean was very thorough as he was um, in his overview. And so there's not a ton of outstanding questions. If you do have questions or if afterwards you come across a scenario where you have more questions, you can always reach out to your account executive or reach out to our team in general via sales at cfwholesale.com or via the cfwholesale.com website. Um, lots of different contact options for you there. Um, anyone from the wholesale team is happy to connect you with Sean and his team. If you're looking for further expertise specifically in the renovation space, um, he truly is an expert in this area and is happy to like, again, just share and like educate and everything um, as you know, you all get up to speed on it because it's a great area of opportunity right now. Um, please attend our next webinar. So again, this one was kind of short and sweet, which is perfect. Our next one will be more in depth into, um, I believe Sean, correct me if I'm wrong, but like the appraisal processes and kind of what those more in depth portions of the process look like. Um, if yeah, you're the collateral, more about that. Yeah, the collateral projects sort of lining up that appraisal bid and third party report, you know, that, that we get a lot of questions on. I think that'll be a good one. Yeah, definitely. So definitely join us for that. Please look at look into your emails for reminders about when to attend that to register. Um, in addition, you will receive a recording of today's webinar. If you're interested in recapping anything um, or watching anything again, uh, please, again, as if you have any questions afterwards, just reach out and we'll see you next time. Thank you so much, everyone, for your time today. We really appreciate you.